Hi, my name is Lorraine Watry and welcome to my studio. I am a watercolor artist and I've worked with watercolor for 26 years now and I thought I would start a new series of videos where I go over different tips, tricks and techniques for working with watercolor and hopefully these short videos will help you in your journey and if you have a question or a technique that you would like to see please comment below and I will try to accommodate that in a future video. Hi, today's tip and trick video is going to go over seven ways to see values in your watercolors. And I am going to uh, start with squinting and squinting seems pretty self-explanatory, but whether you are working from a photograph or if you're working on location or a still life in front of you, squinting can help you see the values uh, in your painting and uh, in the areas around you. So uh, the first thing about squinting is that you are blocking light from coming into your eye and uh, you are also reducing the amount of color that you're able to see with your eyes. So uh, just to give you a, a view of what it looks like when I squint, I am really closing my eyes down so that I barely have any light coming in and everything does blur down a little bit, but I am reducing the amount of values and so I'm seeing uh, more just the uh, reduced uh, number of values. So the lights and darks and you can really uh, get a better idea of what you are looking at. So I hope that was helpful as well as being comical. Now on to number two. Number two is to use a black and white photograph to see the values in the image that you're working on. And this is not the exact painting from uh, the original. This was a different uh, composition, but I had this uh, sitting next to the photograph and so I just pulled that out. So using a photograph where you uh, either print it out as a black and white or you copy it and make it black and white is a good way for you to see the values and not just the color that might be in the scene. And a yellow is often a color that uh, can be uh, mistaken uh, as either darker or lighter than it really is because it is such a strong uh, color it is sometimes hard to tell what values uh, you have in your uh, painting uh, as compared to what it might actually be. So that is number two is to have a black and white photograph and number three is to take a copy of your painting. So my painting uh, this is a completed painting but if I take a copy of it, that will help me tell whether or not I have my values where I want them. Do I have things that are separating? This is close in value here, but it still separates from the background where I want it to separate. And um, sometimes when you're looking at something that is a color image, whether it's your painting or a photograph, sometimes it's hard to tell the values. And so taking a black and white copy of it is a way that you can do that. And so this painting I just set on my copier and printed it off at home. But if you have a bigger painting uh, or you don't have a copier at home, it could be something where you just go in somewhere and uh, make a copy of it. And I will sometimes do that when I am some part of the stage into working on a painting. If I'm having issues seeing some part of it where it I can't quite tell if it's working, then making a copy of it is one way to help me tell how the values are working. Number four is using a value scale to help you see the values. And this is a painting that I'm using as a demonstration in a class I am currently teaching. And uh, so my photograph uh, is showing values in the snow and then snow can often feel like it's darker than we uh, actually are painting it and because there can be a lot of snow on co uh, snow on color color on snow uh, in order to show the shadows and create the shadows um, it can feel odd to have that much color in there so while you don't have to exactly match what your photograph is showing if you are uh, maybe wanting to check and see how close you are or if you want to adjust something, a value scale like this can really help. And this is something that I just created on my own, but you can get value scales uh, in different art stores and online that can give you the same 
kinds of things to um, use. And so when I go over to my photograph, then I use squinting and I squint down and I see if that value in the little opening there is similar to the value around it. And it is very close. So if I go over this way, I think you can see on the camera maybe that that's a little, the circle is a little darker than the 40% or um, I go down to 30% and you should be able to really see that value change there. So it's probably somewhere in here and I think 50% is pretty close. And then I can go over to my painting and I can look at that same corner and that will tell me if I have the value close enough. Now in this instance, I don't want to go as dark as my photograph. Um, I could, but I, I like the value that it's at right now. And I have uh, some good highlights in the snow and it's more about um, for me, pushing the values one way or the other, if I need to, in order to make certain areas separate or stand out or get pushed back. So again, in this photograph, and it also depends when you're working from a photo photograph, um, how your camera took the image. So because there's lots of white in this image, in order to get the white right, some of those dark areas is going, they are going to be pushed darker. So um, if I worked with the value that's on the, actually on the photograph, um, it's actually a little darker than that, maybe somewhere between 90 and 100%, which I don't want to push my values in my actual painting that dark. And so the values on my trees in the background are probably somewhere closer to 60% maybe. So it would be um, maybe comparing your values then if you're not going to go as dark as uh, your photograph is. So that would be a way to use a value scale to help you um, check your values and see if you want to make adjustments. And by reducing the amount of whatever that color is, so like up here in the blue sky, if you can't quite tell uh, what uh, the value is or how dark that area is, by reducing it down to a small shape surrounded by a, the value, uh, that can help you see um, whether or not you are getting the value where you want it to be. Number four is using red or green acetate or blue to tell you what your, or not tell you, but help you see what your values are. And uh, depending on what you are painting, where you are, uh, one of these might be better than the other. And I don't actually have blue acetate right now, but um, I can give you the idea of what it looks like with these two. So I had uh, used red acetate for quite a while. And uh, by placing the uh, red sheet over my painting, then that basically reduces everything to a red value and can help me tell uh, if my um, values on my painting are working. And so red acetate is one. But what you need to know is that red acetate will filter and make darker things that are green, cyan, or blue. So when I put the red acetate over this sheet with some green swatches, it uh, shows the yellow as being lighter and, or actually this is kind of peach and rose in here and yellow on that side. And so those go lighter, but some of those greens go darker. So there is some, um, a little bit of some learning to use with these and they aren't the perfect, um, example to get it every value or every color exactly right, but it can give you some idea of what things are doing. Now, if I show you the same images with a green filter, so this was given to me by an artist friend and it is um, created by a company called uh, Values Check and I have no affiliation with them, um, but it was just something that I had, so I thought I would um, pull it out so you could see it. And this is uh, one that green uh, 
plastic cellophane uh, sheet or this kind of thing is something that you might want to use if you're painting on location a lot because uh, it's going to uh, not affect the greens and make them darker but it will possibly give you a good look at the values in the other colors so when you're looking through green the green uh, will darken uh, the uh, magenta red and orange range so now where those looked lighter whoops those areas on my swatch looked lighter before with the green they look darker so um, it, you know again this is not a perfect system but it can assist you in some ways to see values to some extent and when I'm looking at the greens, then that's probably more true to what they are. I had it over the orange there. That's probably more true to what they those values actually are. So take that off. And then I could use it on here if I wanted to. Um, I could use it over my palette. And that basically darkened most everything. Um, and if I put the red up there a little less clear then uh, you can see some of the values on my palette as well and over the red and yellow it's going to darken these because it is the opposite uh, color and so then you can see the values um, of how it looks with the green and really you're supposed to hold these in front of your eyes and not put it right on your object okay so you can use a uh, red green or as I said the blue cellophane but I don't have any blue right now and blue will darken the uh, or red orange and yellow uh, families of colors so maybe if you're really wanting to check things uh, with a variety of um, these options you might you might want to have the red blue and green that you can kind of switch between to see how things are working tip number six is to take a photo of your painting and you could do this at any stage while you're working on your uh, image and then that will help guide you in how things are looking because once you've taken the photo so I'll come up here and get a photo of my painting and you want to make sure you're taking this in good light so that it pretty much has even light over your painting So then once I have my photo taken, then I can change it to black and white. And by changing it to the black and white, that can help tell me how it's looking in, in the value range. And uh, depending on your uh, photo app or your app that you use to manipulate, manipulate uh, your photographs, you may or may not see the exact same thing as, uh, sorry, I need to get the right part of it here. Um, depending on the filters that are in there, they don't all work the same. So you want to try to want, find the one that is closest to gray. And actually my, this one has black and white. And so that one is going to give me a good idea of how the values are working. And I will go ahead and pull it up so that it can be seen a little better. So that is a good way to check the values on your painting and see if everything is separating the way you want it to. The last tip for seeing values in your painting is to actually look at your painting backward. And uh, there probably is a way I can do this with my video software, but I'm just going to use the way I would normally do it. and. Actually, I have a mirror that I can set my painting up uh, in a room and look at my painting backward. So this is just an example, but without trying to blind everyone, I thought I could uh, show it this way. And by looking at your painting in reverse of the way you've been painting, at, painting it and seeing it, that can really help you uh, see things that you may have missed. So by looking at it backward, you start to notice the values and things that might uh, be working or not working or the shapes because you are um, 
kind of reversing it in your brain. And so that is a tip that I will use quite a bit and it helps me see the values and also the colors and shapes if I need to adjust something. And so I hope these different tips were helpful and that you got some ideas of how you can see values in your paintings. And if you have a tip, trick, or technique that you would like to see in watercolor, please leave a comment below and I will add that to my video list. Thanks and have a good day. Bye!